the way you played, you put your body on the line, you're fully committed, you're making tackles, you're making blocks, you are going to make mistakes. Was there a time where you thought, am I actually unlucky with own goals? You seem to go through a little phase in your career, a little spell, maybe a couple yeah. of month period where it seemed to things seem to be like just happening to you in particular. Crazy, crazy. I thought I'd uh, smashed a few mirrors and walked past a few black cats, you know, because there was a period where I think I played against uh, Arsenal and scored an own goal against Arsenal. And then we played Chelsea at home the week after that. And I scored an own goal against Chelsea. Two games, one of them we drew, one of them we lost because of the own goals. And I was just thinking, what is going on here? But I was I was quietly confident that I'd get through this because, I, you know, I, like I said, I was... Um, I was massively a, a believer in my own ability and I knew how good and what else I was contributing to the games. And these were just unlucky um, situations that was highlighted massively because it was the premiership. Um, so I had to, you know, dig deep and believe in myself. And I had the backing of the team, the backing of the manager. He made quite a few jokes out of it. Like, I, th I think when I scored the goal against Chelsea, the second one, and they interviewed Martin O'Neill on Sky after the game, and he said, um, next game we're going to pick Frank up from corners or something like that so he he was light-hearted with it and and that was good for me because it didn't put me under pressure you know going into next games that was the brilliance of Martin O'Neill with the way that he handled situations but no I, I never doubted myself you know even when I scored an own goal against Ian Walker who was obviously an England goalkeeper from about 20 yards away um, giving him a back pass and he, he slipped and it went past him uh, at Middlesbrough away um, I, I ended up getting man of the match for that game and things that people don't realise is the same seasons that those own goals were going in I won player of the year at Leicester and stuff like that so there was things that with the way you play you're yeah. going to get these incidents up. yeah 100% and I was always a, a type of player that if I'm going to score an own goal it's going to be trying to stop the opposition from scoring and if it if it goes in my own net it goes in my own net but I won't let um, the opposition score without me trying to stop it. So sometimes you get that wrong. But, you know, I wouldn't change that for anything because, you know, if you look over how many games I actually played and how many own goals I scored, it wasn't that many. 70 clean sheets as well, so you're doing something right. Yeah, yeah. And uh, obviously, you know, as I got older, got um, more experience, uh, I think I improved as a player. And probably, you know, my best years were just leaving Chelsea as a player I think I matured more between the age of 26 and 30 I think you 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 come into your own in knowing the game and stuff so I probably missed my best years at Chelsea but obviously achieved my best moments in football playing for Chelsea was there what was your favorite Frank Sinclair chant that the, the crowds used to have did you have your own special chant at Chelsea uh, yeah, I, I had a couple, really. One of them you can't really repeat on there, I don't think. But, I mean, before before um, Frank Lampard come to the club and Super Frank, that was for me. Um, and then, obviously, I left and Frank Lampard come and he took that, that song on from there. Um, but there was there was a couple others that I can't really go into. But I, I think I was a little bit of a, um, uh, um, you know, the supporters' favourite. Bit of a terrorist hero, cult hero, if you cult like. Cult hero, that's it, that's the word. I was looking for a bit of a cult hero because you know they've Chelsea have always been traditionally ones that support you know players that have come through the academy and um, and you know done well for the football club and obviously in our years we were doing it quite regularly which is it's difficult nowadays for the players because of you know the money in the game and and the best players in 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 the world playing and applying their their selves in this country it's more and more difficult for these young kids to get regular football at this level. How much would you have liked to have been part of the Roman Abramovich era here at Chelsea? Do you you were probably watching it from the outside in with a greater insight than anyone else? What what would you have given to be part of that that sort of spell? Um, I I don't really look at it as the the part because of the owner because I think Chelsea were going on that pathway anyway. Obviously, may not have been as successful because of the money that um, Abramovich was bringing into the football club. But I, you know, we'd we'd won three trophies in in two seasons. The season that I left, so I think we was going and and starting to become a football club, a force in England anyway. But obviously, you know, when Abramovich came, he he took it to a new level with the the type of players that. Chelsea started to recruit at the football club and obviously you know I was still a supporter of the club and you know just watched that like you said as for, as a, from afar and it, it gave me a um, 
a sense of proud of being proud as well because I was part of the the evolution of the football club I believe I, you know and and they were going on to bigger things and I knew I'd played my part in where Chelsea were going so you know I, I was really pleased to see the football club doing so well so what are you up to at the moment, Frank? We know you've got your coaching badges. Is there any chance we can see Frank Sinclair going into sort of the managerial role in the future? Yeah, well, I've, I've had a touch of that already. When I fin first finished uh, playing, um, I managed as player manager for Colwyn Bay, who was playing in the Conference North at the time. And I'd done that for three years, close to, sorry, for t close to two years. Um, and thoroughly enjoyed that. And then since then, you know, I've, I've taken on my education on on coaching and I'm now a qualified UEFA A licensed coach and I'm working at the moment at um at Rochdale in in their academy doing the under 16s and I'm sort of like um, in in tandem with that job I'm the assistant manager of Radcliffe FC who's a very ambitious football club um trying to go through the leagues um we're having a fairly good season i've been there you know just over a calendar year when we first took over at the football club we were in a relegation battle um as we speak at the moment we're in the top two looking to get promoted from the evo stick to the evo stick premier cool. which is only one league below the the conference so you know there's a there's a massive plan in place um for that football club and i'm working alongside john macken who has obviously you know um had a great career himself in the professional game playing for Preston and Manchester City as well and we worked well together you know we worked we both worked together at Oldham Athletic um, in the academy there before he got the job um, and um, in between that I've worked for Hensford I've been manager of Hensford Town Football Club in the conference and also was interim manager at Brackley Town as well so I've had a fair share of my experiences of lower league um, management um, which is very difficult Obviously, um, you know, recruiting players and, and the coaching, the time that you get to spend with players, it's only part-time football. So realistically, you're only really seeing them three times a week. But the ambition is, you know, to, to get to a higher standard and whether that be with Radcliffe Football Club or maybe we go on as a as a team and staff to, to better things because of what we've done at Radcliffe, then, you know, that's the situation. But yeah, I'm ambitious and, you know, I want to get right to the top where I was as a footballer, as a coach and as a manager as well so um, yeah watch this space and you know I'm working very hard at improving every day in what I'm doing. I'm watching your punditry on Chelsea as well I think you're a fantastic pundit it's great to see people with your knowledge giving it back to the game a little bit it's, it's fantastic. Yeah I enjoy this side of it because you know it's the research that you have to do that I think uh, you're educating yourself by doing this stuff in in football terms as well so you know I'm fortunate enough that um, Chelsea think of me in the way that they do to give me the opportunity to work within the TV and and have you know um, my own my own input into the games weekly that that we do with the shows here. They're very in depth, working with some great pundits, the likes of Pat Nevin, you know Gigi Salmon and Jason Cundy, who's a bit crazy sometimes. He's but a bit of a character, old Cundy. Yeah, yeah, he is a massive character. You obviously you you hear him most nights on Talksport, winding people up left, right, and centre as well. So good fun as well as um um you know interesting work that we do here at Chelsea and, and you know it's something that I've been doing for quite a few years and I fully enjoy it and you know I hope um, whatever you know avenue I go down in coaching and management if I can tie that up with with doing the, the stuff at, at Chelsea as well I'll continue to do it. I want to ask you your favourite or top Chelsea five-a-side team from any player of any era putting you on the spot here a little bit you Frank are. so there's you no are. no researching <laughs> no researching for you on this one yeah. we're going straight in give, give me your give me your top players five. wow um it's got to be a team as well you've got to be a team okay so top five Chelsea uh players from past and present I'd go with uh Peter Bonetti in goal um John Terry at the back with Marcel Desailly um midfield players I'd have uh Dennis Wise and Frank Lampard and striker, wow, that's going to be a tough one. I'll go with Didier Drogba. 
Not a bad side. Oh, you didn't put yourself in the team. Quite modest as well, Frank. Yeah, I, I, I didn't know I could be in the team. But I'll, I'll be happy managing that five-a-side team. I think they'll do all right. We had Stephen Reid on the other day as well. He yeah. didn't put himself in his team as well. I don't know what it is with you guys. You're very too humble. Too humble. Yeah, well, if you think that you're one of the best five players that you've ever seen before, I think you need to have a little check of yourself, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Speaking yeah. of which, who's, the, in your opinion, the best technical player you've played with? Um, 100% that question is very easy for me and I played with some good ones you know uh, Rude Hullet to the back end of his career was a top top player along with Glenn Hoddle as well I thought was a master player but obviously to the back end of his career as well but for me uh, the best player I ever played with was Gianfranco Zola I think the little magician you know strong he could do things with a ball that I'd never seen before and you know he came from a background of learning off of Diego Maradona so that's the type of ilk that he was, yeah, at Napoli together. And, and that, you know, that showed when he came to English football just how good Diego Maradona must have been if Zola was learning off of him because, you know, he was a phenomenon at Chelsea. And, you know, to this day, you know, Chelsea supporters, there's a lot of Chelsea supporters thinks that um, Gianfranco was the, the best ever player for Chelsea. And it's brilliant that he's back at the club um, working with Sar Sar with Sari and, um, you know, and, and being his assistant. And um, back at the club, I'm sure he's loving that. Quick word on Chelsea this season. Sorry, in control. Chelsea are sixth in the table. How would you sort of uh, summarise this season so far? Um, I'd summarise it as it's been up and down, obviously. I thought he started brilliantly, um, brought a different type of football to Chelsea that never seen at the football club, you know, been labelled the sorry ball. Um, but, it's, you know, I, w I watched him at Napoli last season quite a bit because I'd done quite a bit of work for Serie A last season as well and his Napoli team and the way they played last season and was really excited about, you know, what he was going to bring to English football. But I think it takes time. I think he needs time. And, you know, you look at, the, the likes of Guardiola in his first season at Man City found it very difficult. I think Sarri's, you know, been on the same sort of level as as Guardiola over one season, you know, of success. And I think, you know, if he gets the right time and gets an opportunity to bring in more players that suit the way that he wants to play, I think he can be very successful at the football club. But it needs that patience. Um, at the moment, still fighting for a place in in the top four, and also obviously got the opportunity of qualifying for the Champions League uh, through, uh, through the Europa tournament as well, the Europa League tournament. So I think there's in the next few weeks are going to be very important to see where, where Chelsea finish because for me, you know, the, the top two positions are, are taken um, with Man City and obviously Liverpool and I think there's four teams fighting for the final two and I think it will go to the wire. Let's talk about the title race. Do you think yeah. Liverpool have got enough about them to, to, to make this a really close run title race? I hope not. <laughs> if there's two teams I don't want to win the Premier League, one's Liverpool and one's Spurs. So um, I'm quite happy that Man City are back in it because I don't think any Chelsea supporter would be, would be able to live with any of them two clubs winning it. Um, but no, I've, obviously Man City have pack, pegged them back um, a few weeks ago. You know, uh, Liverpool was strong. It, I think they were, you know, just after Christmas, 10 points clear yeah. and, and flying. But, you know, th as it shows that the campaign is the campaign and you look at where you are at the end of May and uh, not the end of Christmas to see, you know, how you're going to, how you're really going to get on. And I think personally that Man City have the momentum with them and I think they're going to go on and win the league probably by five or six points com comfortably. Um, but, Again, you know, Liverpool have put up a good fight and, uh, you know, you still got to um, admire the way that Klopp, uh, his teams play and the, the exciting type of football they play, the attacking type of football they play. And I'm sure he'll learn more, uh, more about himself from this campaign again to, to equip himself better for possibly next season if they don't win it this season. Favourite centre-half to watch in the Premier League at the moment? You, that's your position, no doubt. You're, you're in tune to what's going on there. Who, who do you think is the number one centre-half in the Premier League? Yeah, for me, a uh, big part of the success that Liverpool have had, I think, is Van Dijk. Um, you know, I watched him quite closely when he was at Celtic and I couldn't believe... No one came in for him after probably, you know, 12 months at Celtic because for me, he was outstanding. But obviously, there's that 
opinion that there's such a big difference between Scottish football and English football. Certain players that do really well in Scotland doesn't mean that you're going to do well in the English game. A lot of players that have done well in Scotland and then come to England and struggled in the past. But um, for me, Van Dijk's um, uh, a top top centre half uh, that could grace any team in the world and, and hold his own. And he certainly is cl a class act for Liverpool. Cinco, I just want to say it's great to get you on Full Court Football 24. Thank you and Chelsea from the club for allowing us to come here and give us a bit of your time. It's a great pleasure and hopefully we get a chance to catch up with you again in the future. Yeah, my pleasure, James. Uh, good luck with this podcast. I hope it all goes well for you. And it's obviously been a pleasure to bring you into the football club and see what we do here. Thank you very much, Frank. I'll catch you soon. Thank you, mate. You're welcome.